let's talk about optimization, specifically polycount. And there's no download for this tutorial, just follow along in the video. So what is polycount? Well, 3D objects are made up of what's called meshes, and the meshes are comprised of a collection of vertices and edges and faces, which we call polygons. And well, the collection of those polygons is the polycount of an object. We can also look at the amount of triangles that make up an object by looking at the mesh. So looking at this hand model, if we come down here, click here, it's gonna pop up the mesh and I can click on it right here. And if we look, it is made of 1,678 triangles and that's its poly count. Now, as you can imagine, the higher poly count that we have, the more details we have to draw out every single frame. And this can be incredibly taxing in VR because we have two eyes that we are rendering for. Even more challenging, the Oculus Quest 2 is probably the most widely spread VR device, and that's kind of a mobile device, and so we don't have that much wiggle room when it comes to poly count. In fact, Meta itself recommends that we keep the triangle count or poly count to about 750,000 to 1 million. So if we're going to optimize for poly count, first we need to be able to look at the problem. And to display the poly count, we just go over to the game window here, hit stats, and you can see here what the poly count is. And it's under tries, which stands for triangles, but yeah, that's the poly count. And in this scene, you can see I have 94,000. And the reason I have 94,000 is I have a bunch of things hidden over here. And so let's see how we can optimize this. Now, the most obvious thing we can do to get rid of a higher poly count. So we have 94,000 right now. And I've bunched up all these objects into a singular object. And you'll see here, well, the best way or easiest way, I should say, to get a lower poly count is remove the objects. If I disable that, you'll see this drops down to 3.4 thousand. Now, the only thing that sucks about that is we don't really want an empty scene here. We kind of want all the objects there. So I'm going to turn that back on. You'll see that the poly count shoots right back up. So we want to keep all the things in the scene, but how are we going to optimize this? Well, one thing that goes on behind the scenes is something called frustum culling. And essentially what that is, is if you see here, Unity actually takes this, this is called the frustum, is this giant angle that I have here, and it will actually not render anything outside of it. And so what we could do is we could reduce how far out this looks. So if you think about a game that has like the field of view and objects appearing at a distance and how that improves frame rate, this is how it does it. So one way we can optimize and reduce our poly count here is by changing how big our frustum is. And the frustum again is this giant box that is what our camera sees. And if we go into the main camera, you can see we have a near clipping plane and we also have a far clipping plane. Now the near one obviously is gonna change how near things appear. And if we reduce that, you'll see that the frustum is shrinking and also down here, the rendering is changing as well. And if we go here, you can see how much that shortened. And well, we kind of are wanting to see things from our eyeballs. So we don't want to reduce that. Even better is to reduce how far we can see out. See, you can see it is really rendering absolutely everything out there. And just for example, I'm going to reduce it down to 10. And you can see it's a lot shorter. Uh, our poly count has reduced by, what, 96,000 down to 9.6 thousand. So that's a lot more reduced. But the only problem is if we're going through here, you'll see that it is kind of loading things a little late. And it really depends on what your game needs, how confined things are. And you gotta experiment and see what is right for you for a viewing plane. Now, one thing that would be really nice is if Unity could figure out, like, if this wall is here, why render anything behind it. That would be a really nice feature to have. Oh, wait, that is a feature. And that's called occlusion culling. And occlusion culling does exactly what I just said. It takes static objects in the scene and it will bake out the scene and it will inform the camera if it should be seeing something or if it shouldn't. So let's implement some occlusion culling. Uh, first, I want to make sure it is active on my main camera. So select the main camera, occlusion culling's here, and you just want to make sure this check mark is checked. And then we're going to go to, to window, rendering, and occlusion culling. So now we have our occlusion window, and we have a few tabs here, visualization, we have bake, and object. And I'm going to kick things off with object. So if I click here, it'll allow us to check 
or uncheck these, and this gives us the option to make it either an occluder static or an occlude D static. And the difference is the occluder static is going to be responsible for making objects not visible. It will occlude things, and the occlude E will say, um, same thing, it just wants to be the object occluded. So all these objects behind here are great examples of what would be just occlude E static. And the reason you don't want them to be occluders is because they aren't really that big enough to block your vision. You might want them to, but it's kind of like a tree or a fence where you should be able to see past it or through it. And it's just not really big enough to matter. And if you make it an occluder static, it's going to generate a lot more data and information when you go to bake the scene. So if it is a tree or a fence or a smaller object, just make it an occlude E static. Otherwise, if it's a wall, that is a perfect candidate for both being an occluder static and occlude D. So now we have a wall that is both an occluder and an occlude E. And next, I want to turn all these little objects into occlude E static. And I'm going to select all these here and hit there. There we go. And so now these will all be occluded if the wall is blocking it. And finally, we want to bake the scene. So I'm gonna come over here. We have a few options before we bake. We have the smallest occluder. So essentially this is saying, however meters high we want an object to be considered for occlusion. So these objects are kind of small. I'm gonna say about one meter is good. Now, what you wanna be concerned about here is the smaller you go for, the more data that generates for when you bake the scene. As a quick example, I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna actually just change this back to five. I'm gonna bake it and you'll see that it is 3.6 kilobytes. Not too bad, but if I change it to one, and bake it, it's shot up to 8.5 kilobytes, which it's still not a lot, but you have to imagine in a bigger scene, this can get out of hand pretty quickly. So next we come to the step of visualization. And before I hop into that, I'm gonna actually change this back to a thousand so we can properly see what's going on. We don't want that short frustum calling going on. So I'm gonna come back over to the occlusion tab and then I am, let's see, yes, we have the scene baked and I'm gonna hit visualization and we should be able to see what's going on, but it's not really doing, there it goes. All right, oh, okay. So what's happened here is we have an area that is also generated to consider for occlusion cooling. So this is the area that's been baked, but since the camera is outside of it, it's not really working. So a quick fix for that, I'm just gonna go to the floor and I'm, I'm just gonna bake that. I'm gonna make it an occluder, an occludy, bake. There we go. And so now you can see this whole area is considered baked. And if I hit visualization, there we are. Now, wherever I go, it's going to be doing it. And yeah, you can see if I move this over, you can see where it starts to render, where it starts to consider things. And the poly count is going up and down as expected. You know, we were sitting at 90,000 before. Now it's sitting at 13. And then if we move forward, it goes down. If I move over here while we render more things, it'll go up. And yeah. That is a quick little intro into occlusion culling. Now, this isn't everything to know about occlusion culling. There's a lot of things to experiment with and have fun with, but I want to just do a short intro on possible ways to lower your poly count. I hope you guys found this useful. Good to be back, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.